Okay, let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is what the cloth type constraint consists of. It is a combination of two types of constraints, distance along edges and bend across triangle. Let's specify the cloth type again and then open the geometry spreadsheet. Now we only see point attributes, let's check the primitives. Then select constraint geometry from here. Look, here are both mentioned constraints types, bend and distance. Now let's talk in more detail about bend constraint. The bend uses each pair of triangles to maintaining the initial dihedral angle between the triangles. In simple words it fights against bending. All these parameters are intended to control the bending process. Before we start exploring each of them, I want to show you another types of vellum constraints that has all of these bending properties. See, on properties of the weld constraint also has bend section with all its parameters, there are even two additional options here that were not in the cloth properties. Well, now I will show you another type which also contains bend constraint. See, here is the same interface on properties of the hair constraint, with the only difference that there is one additional parameter that is unique to this type. And finally, let me show you one more constraint, and then we can move on. Look, on the properties of the pin to target constraint also present bend section. That is any constraint type involving the control of the angle between the particles will have this small interface in its properties. So, now I propose to study in detail each parameter of the bend because it plays the most important role in the simulation of cloth, hair and so on. Let's start with bend stiffness. The default is fairly low value, let's check how it looks. As you can see the geometry bends almost without any resistance. Now let's increase the bend stiffness a little and look again. The difference small but there is, the cloth became a little stiffer and all small folds disappeared. So let's continue to increase the stiffness and see how it changes. Now the difference is obvious, looks more like rubber than cloth. Well, now I propose to set the maximum possible stiffness and check again. As you can see nothing much has changed, although we increased the stiffness decently. So, why did not it get even stiffer? Well, the reason is that very high bend stiffness on high resolution models will require a very large number of iterations to converge. Now let's make 1000 the iteration number and see what happens. You see? There is already a huge difference, it has become like a metal sheet, because within each sub-step, this number of passes taken by the constraint enforcement operations. So, to get stiff, non-stretching or non-bending cloth, you need larger numbers, or you can set a not so large iteration, but at the same time increase the sub-steps, it is even much preferable, and the result will be much better. Let's see how it looks now. See. It got even tougher, although we have decently reduced the constraint iteration. This is because we have five substep, and each substep is processing 300 iterations of the constraint, which in total gets more iterations than having one substep with 1000 iterations. Well, let's move on. We can already revert to default the iteration numbers and substeps. Now I want to show you how much the resolution of cloths affects bending. So, before we change the resolution, let's decrease the bend stiffness. Then select the cloth geometry and reduce decently the resolution. Ok, let's check the result. See, how stiff it is now, although we did not set very high stiffness. Well, now let's decently increase the resolution and look again. As you can see there is a huge difference, and the reason is simple, since bend constraints are based on angle differences, higher resolution cloths will require higher stiffness to exhibit similar radii of curvature. Good, let's move on, now I want to show you how a bend stiffness can be scaled by using point attributes. Select scale by attribute from this menu, and a new attribute line will appear where you can specify the name of the attribute that will scale the stiffness. So, let's copy this, and then create a mask with this name. But before creating the mask, I want to lower the resolution, now it's very dense. 
then drop down the attribute paint node. Now we need to enter the name that we are going to draw. Scroll up to increase the size of the brush, then start painting. The default paint value is set to 1, that's why the painted regions the bend stiffness will not scaled, but the unpainted part will scale down to a minimum. So, let's check what we get. Look, the left side has become as weak as possible, and the right side has remained the same stiffness that we specified. So you can create any point attribute, taking full advantage of the SOP context to control bend stiffness. And not only bend, every parameter that has this option can be controlled by any point attribute. We can also scale by value, or just use both. For example we can now scale our painted attribute 1000 times from here. Let's visualize the painted bend stiffness and then check what has changed. It is difficult to notice the difference now, as we have a minimum substep which is very low to calculate the stiffer cloth. Let's put a 5 and check again. See, the painted area has become much tougher. Or you can multiply the value below 1 and decrease the stiffness on the painted area. Like now. Good, now I want to show you how you can visualize some important attributes related to bending. First, let's turn off the bend stiffness and then go to the Vellum Solver Visualize tab. So, from here we can visualize a lot of things, but for now we are only interested with properties of constraints. Let's select bend angle and see how it looks. This is a color according to how many degrees the bend angle has deviated. The color range from blue to red, the so-called infrared coloring. Let's adjust a maximum bend angle and see again. Blue is where we have the minimum deviation, and red is where we have the maximum deviation. Now let's visualize another very important attribute called bend stress, which visualize the color according to the maximum bending force applied by the constraints. That's why the stiffer area is red, and the weaker area is purple. There is one more important parameter related to bending, which is called bend plastic flow. It will show the color according to how much the bend plastic flow has been triggered. We will consider it when we deal with plasticity. Well, now I suggest moving on to another example file, where we will continue to explore the bend constraint. So, this time we are going to use this basic vellum setup. All vellum constraint and vellum solver properties by default. Now let's turn on the ground plane so that the pig's head falls to the ground. Well, I also want to make the pig's head quite tough, so let's increase the bend stiffness. To properly handle the given stiffness we also need to increase the substeps. Ok, let's check the result. So, this stiffness is good enough, let's continue. Now I want to show you how you can animate bend stiffness during simulation, and also want to show what the damping ratio does. Let's start with the damping ratio. Get closer to the pig's head, and play the simulation. Notice how it dangles, especially the nose. Let's look once more. Well, now I propose to increase the value of the damping ratio and look again. You see, how quickly this extra energy goes away, let's see ones more. Stiff constraints tend to vibrate or jitter unacceptably, the damping ratio reduces this by bleeding energy when evaluating the constraint. If we zero out the damping ratio, then we'll get a lot of jitter, and it will not be extinguished for a long time like now. Well, with damping ratio everything is clear, now let's try to animate the bend stiffness. Temporarily disable simulation so it doesn't interfere with adding keys. Hold down the alt, click on the stiffness parameter to add the key. Then move the time slider to frame 24, and leaving the same value, set the key. On frame 48, we will make it 0.
then on frame 72, we still leave 0 and set the key. And finally, on frame 96, put 1 and set the key. Now let's hold shift and click on it to open the animation editor. Then I want to cycle this short animation curve. Click the gear icon and select channel properties, then from this menu, specify cycle. Take a look, now we have an endless cycle of this animation. Well, let's tweak the time slider and check the stiffness value. Good, now let's turn on the simulation and run it to see what we get. As you can see, nothing happened because the vellum solver only reads the value of the constraint properties at the start frame and throughout the simulation, it does not update these properties. But we can animate this parameter inside a dot network. So now let's remove the animation from here by holding the control shift and clicking on it. Then I want to draw your attention to this group. The generated bend constraints are all added to this primitive group. This is useful to edit them later with a vellum constraint property inside dot network. Let's isolate the constraint primitives then check the output groups. See. We have two primitive groups, bend and stretch, at the moment we are only interested in bend. So, now let's dive into dynamic network. In here, let's drop down the vellum constraint properties node. Then connect to the force output. The vellum constraint property dop allows modification of common properties of the constraints during a vellum solve. In general each property corresponds to an attribute on a constraint primitive, except for remove, which is a pseudo property that immediately deletes the constraint primitive when set. The properties can be further modified by specifying a VEX expression to perform more advanced VEX processing or geometry lookups. This DOP is the recommended way to modify existing constraints. So, now let's activate the group binding, then select bend and turn on the stiffness parameter. Leave the stiffness factor 1, then disable the simulation and start animating as we did at the SOP level recently. Well, the animation is ready, now we can see what we got. As you have already noticed, now the bend stiffness is updates during the simulation. Thus we can animate not only the bend stiffness, but also almost all the parameters of the constraints. When it gets stiff, there's a lot of dangling, so this is a very good example to show the effect of the damping ratio when the bend stiffness changes during simulation. Let's get out of the dot network, then increase the damping ratio and see what will change. See how smoothly it is now gaining stiffness. It also slides slightly on the ground because the default friction value is quite low. To prevent sliding, we have to increase the friction. So let's go to the forces tab and increase the static threshold. Now let's check if the sliding is eliminated. Here we go, it doesn't slide at all, now it's stuck firmly to the ground. Well, the next thing I would like to show you is how you can use an animated mask to control the bend stiffness. For that I have prepared another example, let's switch there. So now let me show you what kind of example I have prepared. The simplest setup, Taurus falls to the ground. All properties of vellum configure cloth and vellum solver by default, the only thing I did was turn on the ground plane. In addition to the basic setup, I also created an animated point attribute and named the mask, which will soon be used to control the bend stiffness. Now I will quickly show you how I create this mask and then we can start using it already inside the DOP network. First I created this simple curve animation. Then I created a mask attribute on the curve and set the value to 1. I also created a mask attribute on torus but set the value to 0. Then I transferred the mask from curve to torus and bind it to the color just to visualize the mask. So now I am going to use this mask inside the DOP. 
For that I will create a null, so that later I can easily refer to the mask from the dot network. Just call it out mask. Then jump into dot network and create a vellum constraint properties node. Connect to force output. Activate group and select bend constraint, then turn on stiffness and set highest value. So now we just need to enable vex expression, then import the animated mask and multiply by the stiffness. But before importing the mask, let's specify the input where it is stored. Look, by default the first input is set to myself, and this means the constraint geometry is bound, because if we check the bindings tab, the constraint geometry is specified. The second input is specified the dot data, which is the vellum geometry, or we can say particles. The third input we will specify external SOP, then we will refer to geometry that has a mask attribute. So, now we can reference to the third input using a VEX expression. Let's type the following. Stiffness, multiply equal to. Then we just need to import the mask attribute from the third input, and for that I will use the point expression. 2 means that we are referring to the third input, since the numbering of inputs starts from 0. So, we just import the point attribute, and multiply by the stiffness. That is where the mask is 1, it will be as stiff as possible, and where the mask is 0 it will be as weak as possible. Well, let's see what we get. That's it, the animated mask controls the stiffness. This way you can control, not only the bend stiffness, but also other properties of the various types of constraints. Okay, that's all for this lesson, in the next lesson we're going to discover other parameters of bend constraint, see you in the next lesson.